Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of my tutorial series how to make a fantasy weapon in 3D code. Today you will learn how to create the core tier, this element, and then you will learn how to, to add details to our head and let it look like this here. And then, at least, you will learn how to make some details for our for our handle here in the for the hammer. Great, let's start. Before I start to create some details today, I will continue and end my tutorial by creating this element here. I will show it to you. This chord. Um, we have created a pattern element for our curved tool to create the chord today. After this I will add some details and begin to <coughs> give, a, um, let's say, some characteristics to our hammer here. Before I start to create the chord I switch my view to the orthographic view, to the orthographic mode. I can do this by clicking on this symbol here or clicking or pressing 5 on my numpad. Here we have it and now it's in autographic. I switch with the 4 key to the side view here left. Now I switch to the curves tool and can <coughs> start to create my my chord. As you can see in the default mode the curve has this shape here. To change the shape, you just click on one of your shapes here in the spline window. In this case, I click on this one here. Now the chord shape changes and we can see the shape that we have uh, we need for our for our object here. It looks a little bit like a rope or a small chord. Sometimes you can you need to change the diameter of your shape here. This can be done by clicking on the right mouse button and on the on the element that you want to change the diameter. Here you can see I am changing the diameter of the second control point here, the red one. And when I click the right mouse button here, I can change the diameter here. <coughs> Sometimes you wanna change you wanna start with a special diameter for your object. So to do this it's always better to define the diameter for the whole object before you start to create the object. So when you are starting with this element all your object elements will be very thick. But and what I do now is I change the diameter a bit to get the right, the right uh, object size here for my object for my war hammer. This is a very nice size, so I will leave it <coughs> and start to make my my object. First, I start with some points, and I have this curve here. What I want to is I want that these points snap to our surface here on this object. The points are not doing this now. I can move them and I can move them through the object and nothing happens. To snap onto my surface, I go into my tool options window here that appears when you are uh, using the curves tool and then I click on confirm. With confirm you can snap the points directly to the object here. As you can see, I move the points over my object and the points are snapping now. Um, this is not working always correctly, so you could you can change the camera view a bit and then you can change it. The model is snapping always, or the points are always snapping on the on the whole surface. That means they snap on all visible layers of your model. <coughs> so when I move it here then the point snaps to this element or to this element. I can show it to you here. I move it up and 
I hope, yeah, the, the point, oops, then the point snaps to my, to my whole element here. Okay, I move it back down and continue to create my rope. When we see us uh, see our object, so we see that this model, <coughs> the rope needs to be a little bit diagonally positioned. So I do this by clicking here and setting the control points for my for my rope or for my cord. Sometimes elements are going into the object. This is because um, 3D code is a writes or a draw a spline here, and the shape is following the spline. <coughs> and if the two control points are far away from each other, then the spline will be um, drawn directly through our rounded object. To avoid this, you just click here into the into onto the spline, then you see a green ball or a control point appear, and you can insert a new point just by clicking on this here. And now you have a point that is uh, snapping to our surface, and now you can uh, make a better shape for your for your element here. <coughs> Okay, now I move it a little bit up and move this one here into into the last one so that it looks like a bit like it was, uh, yeah, I don't know how to say it in English, they are connecting each other. Okay, now I will click and set some more of this, of this elements here. It's always good to move the points a little bit more down that so that that they can intersect a little bit so it looks it looks better later when when I'm when I'm ready with the with the model okay going on and more <coughs> you can make as much rounds as you need for for this object so it, you are deciding how how often your cord uh, moves around. I will do it here, and uh, sometimes I guess three or four times here, four rounds, <coughs> and this should be okay. Now I I adjust a little bit the, the cord and can and and see what um, to to see to make it better. Yeah. As done, and as you remember, always move the bolts a bit, a bit down into the object. Sometimes the control points are not good to, to hit, um, but you can see if you hit them right because the points are growing a bit, they are getting bigger, and this is a sign that uh, which, uh, which point you are clicking on. Okay. When the points are near beside each other, it's a little bit hard to to control them to hit them. So, okay. It looks okay, I think. Maybe a little bit more. And now some controls, and some checks here. Oops. Mm -hmm. Great. Okie dokie. This is this is our side view and this is our cord. It looks okay for now. And I will put it into the scene. As always, don't forget if you are creating a new object, just create a new layer first. I will do this by clicking on the root and plus. A new layer was created so that our cord object here will be inserted into this layer after I have clicked to apply or pressed my return key. Before you do this, rename always the layer. In this case, I call it cord. 
if you if you like you can save your chord to for use it uh, later for example after you have changed your curve you will lost your shape here your, your basic shape so before doing this you can save it just by clicking on save and choosing the right the right folder in my in my situation hammer chord and save it okay so when I click escape it disappear and I make a new chord and I when I want to get my old one back you just click here on curves and load and now you can load your old curve uh, yeah your curve and it will be placed here exactly to this position nice good um, before we are before we place this chord we should increase the voxel resolution resolution here I will show you what happened when we don't do this and you maybe you don't just know it already but I will show it to you I press return it's the same like pressing apply and now I click on a different um, uh, a different uh, tool here just uh, to to switch to d to switch off the curves. Yeah, I click on transform. Okay, and now I see what happened. Um, my chord was was placed, but the resolution for the chord is not good enough. We could we we could leave it like it is because the chord is very small, and uh, it it uh, could look a little bit uh, naturally a little bit crumpy. I don't know how to explain it, but. Um, but I will change the resolution. I just press undo, and the chord will will uh, disappear, and the curve will be blend in again. And now I increase the resolution by clicking here on this icon, or by clicking on commands and resolution plus. Now a window appear and ask you uh, that, or remember you have said memory will increase. And I say yes, okay, and I see two times is the resolution for this layer. Now I say apply, and my curve was in um, now uh, implemented or inserted again. Maybe you see some small small problems here, but you can avoid them a bit just by clicking on smooth all. But there is um, there is another solution. This here is mostly because um, I have not I've not connected my curve. I can I could do this before I am using this here. I could connect my curve just by clicking closed. When I do this, the curve will be closed. So the starting point is connecting to the to the to the end point. So here you can see it a little bit. This is my con last point here. I click again on close and it will be opened. So there is the end and here is my other one. When I click on closed, the curve will be closed. Sometimes it's not bad to click and to move the curve. Oops. And maybe connect the, the whole curve here. I make another one here. If you don't see it, you can hide your object and move the points a little bit outside. And now we can do it again and show it and move them here. And now, now I can move them a bit and connect the full curve. Maybe, maybe this is better. So you don't have open ends. Great. Oh, yeah, this this is okay, I guess. Well, maybe a bit. Okay, okay. <coughs> now we I press apply again. We switch to uh, another another tool, and now we have our chord. Now you see there are m much less problems because we have now a closed curve. There's no steps no open holes or something like this. Now I do it again. I I can smooth 
all here and I see this nice element. But I will do this, the smoothing, I will do it later because I'm not ready yet. Um, as you remember, the cord have a small knot and two ends. Before I create the ends, I will do and create the knot. To do this, I create a new curve element. So go to curves here, press escape and start to do a new curve. This curve will represent our knot. <coughs> There's a small but easy way um, to create a knot li looking like uh, element. What I do always is I'm clicking and creating an 8. As you can see, it looks like an 8. And this 8 have to be closed, so I click again on closed. And now we have an 8 that is closed. To edit our object here free, I switch conform off. That's because this curve is not snapping now on this object. Great. Now I can move it and and use and make my, my knot. So before I doing this, I move the control points a bit to this shape here. <clears throat> and later the shape will look like a knot. A bit. Okay. This way. This way. This side here. This side will be will uh, um, will be moved into this object, and this here will be our front of our knot. Okay. So okay, this looks okay. And now I scale the whole knot object a bit. To do this, I click on one of the objects, and now a gizmo does appear. In the middle of the gizmo, there is a white box. When you are clicking on the white box, you can scale the whole curve. And as you can see, we, we can scale the control curve, but we don't scale the size of our shape here. So I scale the curve here, and it looks nice for our knot here. Of course, I have now to change our shape again. I click on this object, and it will be changed. This um, this node gives you a, a, an additional uh, possibility. You can now rotate it in the axis and scale the axis if you like. The middle white circle here gives you the ability to move the object. And I move the object here and I switch to the side view and move it here. And now I switch to the front view, move it, oops move it with the arrow here to the middle, scale it maybe a bit, wait, now I scale it a bit, okay, move it maybe, maybe move it a bit into the element, yeah, and this is okay now, okay, this way, and I press return, now remember, don't move uh, to another layer, it's always a chord layer, and I say apply and change change my tool and now I see there is a small knot here. It looks a bit like a knot and it's okay. Good. Now switch to the front view or okay I switch to the side view. Mm -hmm. Now I will make this ends here. This is very easy. I go into the curve mode again, press escape to have a new curve maybe two times sometimes. Click again and now I have the shape for our for our ends. Because I am in the not conform mode I can move the, the balls, the control points into the object without snapping it. So and now I move it to here. I move it a little bit to the side. Some a bit into the object, yes. Okay, maybe a little bit more into this here. It's better later for our baking process to 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 lay <coughs> to lay a bit on the object here. Maybe maybe a little bit out. Okay, I will do it a bit out. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
front view, some changes. Great. Okay, this one now changing to this. <coughs> Return. This is our first one. Now I click on the object and can move the whole curve a bit. Press escape and now I can control the points. The moving or controlling modes you can find here. The letters here in the elements here, the letters means these are the shortcuts for our object. So when I'm pressing Q, I'm moving to the extrude mode and can I can extrude something from our points here. So when I'm clicking here, I extrude an element, okay? When i pressing R for rotate, so I can rotate my object like a bone object. So what you see here is the direction where I am rotating. So when the arrow is directing down, so it means I can rotate uh, around the down, the down object or the lower object, okay? The same happening when I'm changing it, I can rotate around the object where the arrow is showing on or pointing. So this is very easy for us to, to change a bit the object here. Yeah. What you can do is of course by moving. The same is for scale, you can scale a bit. But I will move it and I move my elements here to prepare them. Okay. Yes, looks okay. <coughs> Sorry. Return. And now I have all like I wanted. Here we have a nice curve. I should switch back to the perspective view. Go to the handle. As you can see, we have a very nice element. I switch the grid off too. Now we have a very nice Court, and it looks a little bit more interesting. Great. Now I will continue with one of the most interesting parts. It's the uh, details. We are giving the elements, the hammer, a lot of details and later we give the handle some structure so that it looks like a bit like uh, made of wood. For example, to do this, I take my pen, my Wacom pen here, and switch to brushes. And now I can start to create some cool things. Before I do this, I must uh, make some reorganization. Um, as you remember, I've created all the elements here, all the objects single. So the hammer front is here, the cylinder is here and the eye is here and so on. What I want is um, I want to melt all of them together into one layer so that all this object will represent um, one element, so one head. To do this I create a new layer that is called head or hammer head, okay? Here it is and I look onto my resolution and I see the handle or the hammer front are two twice the size that uh, than the default one and I click on my symbol and I increase my resolution to twice the size so this is an empty layer now so what I want to do is I want to move all the elements into this layer when I do this all elements that will be moved from their layers to this one will be melted. So um, before I do this, I uh, uh, dis um, disable or hide of the layers. This is a help for me because um, I can see then which one have been moved to this layer. So when I would switch it off on, I can show it to you. I move to this layer and I see this layer. And when I move it here with the right mouse button and say move, uh, uh, wait a second, merge to merge to hammer head, then I see the two objects will intersect a bit. Yeah, this one and this one. 
So to, to avoid this, to have a better control, I always switch the, I always hide my source layers that I'm moving to this layer. Um, additionally, it gives you a little bit control to, to, to see which one have been moved and which not. So, okay. So this one, the handle front, is moved to the hammer head. Now it's the hammer head, okay? If you like, you can, of course, uh, you can, of course, um, set some some different materials here with the shaders. I move the shader here so I can see the shaders and give this layer the shader here, the gold shader, so I can see it. And this is the other one. So, okay. Now I go to hammer front cylinder. This is a f this part here and say again, right mouse button, merge to hammer head. Now the hammer head is melted with the, the cylinder here. The good thing is, I, when I do this this way, I always keep my information, my basic information. So I keep the information and can use it later again if it is needed. For example, if I see um, this layer is not uh, high enough or have not enough resolution, then I can increase the resolution and do it again, for example. Okay, now we do the same with the hammer back, right mouse button merge to hammer head here it is and now the eye here the same merge to hammer head and now all elements are here in this layer and represents just one one object now it's one object completely and melted i switch back to my default uh, material i guess this one is it yeah and can I can work now um, and add details to this to this object. The others will be hidden, will stay hidden, and I can work now here. To do this, um, what I plan is I want to to um, what I want to is to weld them. What I am imagine is uh, um, I think someone have weld these elements together and if you weld something you see always or sometimes you see a weld seam. To, to make my weld seam I sometimes take the sphere here, the sphere tool. The sphere tool paints a sphere on my object. The sphere looks a little bit like a welding seam as you see. And this is a very good to for our situation here. So I change the size of my welding seam and now start to create a seam here. Now what I do is I I can I can melt or, or smooth them a bit and uh, do it again here. Maybe a little bit more smoothing, yeah. And now it looks dynamically like someone has welded these elements together. I know a fantasy object, yeah. I had some uh, messages from my German audience and someone told me uh, this is uh, uh, this is a fantasy object. How how can you can you weld the elements together? Is this uh, is this actually possible in the fantasy world to to weld something? Um, so I answered um, to weld uh, uh, in the fantasy world or in a fantasy world, I guess there is everything possible. So imagine someone who made this weapon, for example, dwarves, or uh, I don't know who, they they have the ability to to weld things together. Um, yes, I say it it's possible in my world. So my dwarves in my world have the possibility to weld things together. And as you see, I can now make a very nice weld seam and make it here, always with my sphere. The sphere tool is not used very often, I think, but for this situation, it's it's great. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is my weld seam, and maybe I will do another one, I'm not sure. No, this is okay, I guess. Yeah, I to do it only here. That's enough. 
The next thing will be some some uh, some elements after using this weapon. So the the p the man or the, the the person that used this weapon has used it in in a fight. So there are some fight elements to uh, like like uh, cut cotton elements or some some. Uh, or, or some bump and all this. So before doing this I switch to my cutoff tool and we'll cut first the, the, the cotton elements. The cutoff tool is the default um, tool here. The default pen tip is the rectangle. So I could cut off this element but it looks not very nice. A little, a little bit here. Okay, so I move to to this tool here and now I will switch, cut some elements here off. So what I do is I um, I click and paint a curve, and I can click here on the first element, and the curve will be will be closed, and uh, the element will be cut off. What you can do, you can do the same by just by clicking double clicking the last point. So what I mean is start, make a small cut and double click. And with double click the close the curve will be closed too. So okay, I will do the same again here. Double click and you see the curve is now set and the element will be cut. The same here and again and again. I switch back to the easy mode. Yeah. Some more. Fine. This is a very creative uh, creative uh, work in this case. Okay. Sometimes maybe now you see that the resolution is not very nice for our object. It will be okay but Sometimes it's better to have a higher resolution, so I will increase now a bit the resolution by clicking on the icon, and now I see 467 megabytes of RAM will be used for this, and my object will be now set to the double size, and now it's a little bit better resoluted, and I can see it by clicking here and make a new one, so it's sharper, the same I do here. Okay, and so on. Great, maybe here too. And again, if when you are using a, f a flat angle, then you can do such things. So the next um, tool what I'm using for for this mode is uh, the scrape. No, the plane. I guess the scrape tool, yeah. And um, the scrape tool makes this here. I have this uh, tooltip, and I can now make very nice scraped elements, like a beaver. And when I do it fast, then you see it looks a bit like a uh, bumpy and and used used corners for this object it looks very nice. The bigger your brush is, the sharper are the corners or the, the bevels here. And if you would like to have a very sharp ones, so, so you change from soft scrape to off, you make this off and now you have much more sharpen, sharpen bevels. I do it here again. It makes, um, it, this makes elements much more interesting. And, uh, Okay, now we can. Okay, jokey. So the same will be made here. Do it creative, don't. Don't. It don't have to be very equal all. The more. The more elements, the more details here, the better. The same here. more 
interesting. Again, creative work. Not much. Not not much to say. <coughs> um, it's your imagination what you do, and uh, I like this. I like it this way here. Mm -hmm. The same will be done here. Okay. Sometimes I saving the scene. It's better. Always try to save sometimes to file. Great. Now it looks like this. I go back to the perspective mode and it looks very interesting now. Very nice. Great. Okie dokie. Now I make some, uh, some, maybe some more things. Um, I make some holes here or bumps. Uh, by using the extrude tool for example and, and now I pr when you are using the extrude tool and going here over then the element will be extruded but if you, if you press the control key then you get some <coughs> um, then you, pre uh, you press into the model the object and now, and now I can can change it a bit so great the same here mm -hmm. I'm always using this uh, this brush here it's completely okay and I pressing control while I'm moving around okay Now I have the ability to create such a structure here. Yeah. If you don't see enough, you can change the light here by moving it up and down. And I put it down to 70, to a value of 70, and it looks okay. Or you move the camera a little bit in this way, so you can uh, see what you are what you are changing. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, and now are some controls, some checks, is it okay or not, maybe some here. Mm -hmm. Yes, looks not bad, I switch to another material. Now you have an, an imagination how it looks like, uh, uh, looks in a metal material, then it looks much interesting, much more interesting, yeah. like metal yes maybe here some more and now we get a view of this object here nice good 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 the next will be I go back to my default material and next the next will be I create the structure for for the handle here it have to be look look like uh, like uh, yes I like wood and I will make some some wood elements into this structure uh, into this handle to make it like wood or to look it like wood first I make it smaller here I 
take the masks to to use it uh, like a like a stamp to to represent the wood what I need it. And what I like is um, I like to move my mask here to the bottom of the window. It's a bit better to change because you see more of your masks. The same I do with materials. I move them to the left side, and now I can change them by moving the center here. And now I have here on the right side, on the right hand, I have the masks, and on the left hand, I have the materials. You can save your GUI your user interface just always by clicking here on Windows and store a workspace then you can store your workspace somewhere on your uh, hard disk and load it later or you can move it with you to a client okay Dick. now I uh, take uh, the extrude tool, there is it or maybe let's have a look, build, I like the build tool and choose um, uh, a structure for using it like uh, wood or wood structure so I see what I have um, when you're clicking here on a mask then the mask appear and the mask will be will be repeating so you can uh, when the mask is too slow uh, too too small or too big you can reset the resolution of your mask by clicking on reset here in the preview options reset and now the mask will be uh, set to the default resolution or or it, the texel size is one on one here it is so we can use this one or another one i must take a look first reset what is it Mm -hmm. I must look first which one will be will be taken. No, there are some default materials. Some of the materials uh, were added by me, but some of them are are the default materials or default masks. So I, you should take a look if you have some. Um, you can always set an own mask by uh, saving a black and white image to your hard disk and you can add the new image the new mask just by clicking here on new and then you can choose your mask and the mask will be added here and represented by this square thumbnail okay but I look what I will take it's a bit hard I don't remember which one the, which was the last one um, I hope I will find it. Reset. This one looks not bad. So, okay, reset. You can uh, you can change your your mask resolution by um, by uh, with this uh, element with these tools here. So first, I switch back to my autographic mode. It's always better. Reset. Now the mask is reset. And what you can do is now here the first one will rotate the mask. The next one here, this one, will move the mask. This one is a zoom, and this one is a squatchy or a stretch and squash tool. This is needed next. And when you have squashed it and want to back uh, to make it back or to reset it, just click on reset. So, okay, when I am in the handle layer, now I can directly start to. To create the structure by build and structure here you see the structure but the, the point is um, what I like is um, I don't want to see my mask later but I want to see how the mask is extruded or built on my model here to to do this um, to switch off the mask but see the result you can switch the modes here at the moment the mode is uh, set on shown. Shown means it will be always shown when I am working. When I switch it to the next one, hidden, so there is the mask is there, but I can work and see the result. You can see the mask when you are using this tool and move it. Then in this case, the mask will be temporarily shown, and you can move it around and set your new area where you uh, where you want to work. The same happens when you are zooming. And there's the next mode, auto. Auto means when I'm painting, 
the mask disappear, but as soon as I release my mouse button or not paint, then the mask will be shown again. I like the mode hidden, okay? There is a nice way too to, to use the mask and to, to, to adjust the mask. You have seen this mode here, you can click on the icons or you can just drag the right mouse button when you are moving your mouse pointer outside of your object. Here, in this area, I move the right mouse button and now you see I can move my mask. When I um, hold my shift button and move my right mask, uh, my right mouse button, then I can zoom in and out of my mask. Okay? When I uh, press my control key and move the right mouse button, then I can turn my mask. I can rotate it. Reset, reset. Okay, here it is. And when I click on shift and control together and then use my right mouse button, then I can squash my mask. And I do this now to get a, 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 a tree like, a bark create uh, a bark like structure for my object here oh I've um, as you can see I move my camera but the masks will be not moved with the camera this is because I accidentally clicked on re uh, on uh, on lock now unlock now you see the mask is locked with my camera when I unlock it then only my camera will be moved but the masks still stay Okay, but I want to lock it, although this way. If you if you don't like, if you want to to show your mask a little bit brighter or want to see it more, then you can change it here. This is the visibility, the blending mode for the mask. At the moment, you see it. Thirty percent of your mask image will be shown here. When I click on seventy, then I see more of my mask. Let's show it to you. When I click on 30, then it's a little bit more transparent. So 30 is most time 30 is okay. If you like, you can experiment with some of the other modes here and see what happens. But for today, I will show you just what happened or what you need for our handle. Great. Now I start to paint and I see that my structure is nice but not nice enough I make it a bit bigger and now I have a nice structure for my for my handle and maybe some adjustments and now yes looks okay and now I use the build tool and start to paint and have some nice elements here for my for my handle. So um, I will now switch or or hide the other elements just to see my handle, and will paint my my structure on it. I pr I press a control button, so the control button will. will uh, press into my model here, in my object. Okay. If you want, you can lock your, press your depth here. Sometimes it's better to lock your depth, 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 I don't know. You just press on this icon here. Lock the depth mode. Now you can Rest. No, it's not the one. It's uh, here, the curve. Yes. You switch to the mouse mode. You can switch between the pen and the mouse. The mouse mode mode gives you the ability to to paint with a with a continuous depth. This is very good. Maybe I do this here for ten and lock the mode. Now I can paint and paint the structure onto my handle and it's always always 10 
Weihnachten. Later I will smooth it a little bit. So here you see why we need the turn, the rotating. We rotate now a little bit to this side and now we can follow the structure a bit. I am, will show you another nice uh, trick to make a wooden stick. As you can see I've done it manually, I just painted the structure onto my object here. But what I can do too, the, um, it looks not very nice here in these elements or here. What is good to do too is just to make all black. I do it undo to have the same object again. Just want to show you another method to create structures. Okay, I want to go to the handle. When you are clicking Alt, Alt and the layer, so you can switch the other layers off or hide them and see only the layer you have uh, pressed on the eye here. So Alt I means I see only the handle and the others are back uh, are gone. Okay, um, here is our structure. Let's make it a bit. I make a reset and make it a bit like this. Mm -hmm. And now I switch to the mode to the rectangle. That this this one makes the possibility. Wait a second. Range. Okay. Um, make it to. 100. Oh, it's the wrong, it's the wrong layer. I hope it's okay, the other one. Yeah, the, I moved to the handle. I was in the wrong layer here. I was in the hammerhead. Okay, again. Now I take this here, extrude and move it here. And now the extrusion will be taken through my model. In, because the, the depth is very high, I see a very grumpy, bumpy element, but I make undo, I go into the front view and I turn it a little bit here, and I know I make, I make the depth to 10, it's not very much, it's very good for our um, wish. So I do it again, I make here a selection, and now the structure was made over the whole object and the cool thing is it was made onto the sides too so the sides look a little bit like a, like a wooden element sometimes it's not bad to to turn the the, uh, the structure a bit to to the to this way and make it again now it will be extruded through the object and looks very nice Mm -hmm. better than before. Now we have it. Now we have our structure. And I show you the other ones. Here it is. Okay. Now we have our our handle with a wooden a wooden art, wooden kind kind of structure. Okay, it's okay. Now maybe a little bit smoothing. Okay, okie dokie. That's here. Yeah, okie dokie. So I close this mode by clicking on close. And now I go back to my perspective view and we see what we have done today. Maybe Where's my sphere? Here's my sphere, my hand ring, and my eye. Eye? Where's my eye? Eye is off, okay. Here we have it. And let's have a small look to my... Okay, okay, yes. Here it is. This is the result for today. The next time I will show you how to make this structure here and this here and this elements 
for this the rest of our Warhammer. But this was for today. I hope you liked it. And yes, I would say we will hear us the next time. Bye bye.